G'day GDL peoples, holes in prisms, how do you do that? Sure, you might be getting pretty good at doing the outline of your prism. Now you want to put a hole in it. You might want to put many holes in it. How do you do that? Well, I'll tell you. So we need to open our help under help documentation GDL reference guide. That opens the PDF version and the online version can be found at gdl.graphisoft.com and click on reference guide. A handy toolbar to have open is your edit GDL library parts toolbar. It's not required, but some of you might find it useful and we'll start a new object under file libraries and objects, new object, or it's this button here on your toolbar. I'll restore down using this button here. On a Mac, it is right click on the tab and choose undock. And for this exercise, I'll just leave the subtype as a model element and I'll leave these blank. But if you're doing a proper object, of course you fill these out. I'll open my 2D and my 3D window and I'll just copy in some starter code that for me just helps get the ball rolling. Uncomment this project to command so that we know what we're doing in 3D. Okay, holes in prisms. The help or the reference guide, it's not really a help, it's more of a reference guide, doesn't have a lot to say about this. We have a look at our status codes. This is pretty much what it has to say. SI equals minus one is used to define holes directly into the prism. It's got some other stuff there. You really got to know what you're doing in order to understand how that works. They do have an example under basic shapes and prism. So we can see that they've got end of contour, end of first hole, end of second hole, end of third hole. So you can kind of piece it together, I guess, but let's explore this and work it out. The trick to defining holes in your prism is to use a status code of negative one, which means that we can't use the prism command because it doesn't have status codes. So we use the prism underscore and any other sort of prism statement will make use of this negative one to define holes. So let's have a look. We will go prism underscore. Well, first of all, we'll define just our basic prism. So it'll be ZZYZX. Four contours, we'll start at zero, zero. The status code of 15 will show all three edges in the face. Then in X, we'll go A, Y will be zero, 15. Then A, B, 15. Then zero, B, 15. No comma at the end. Let's have a look at our 3D view. There's our prism. Let's just change some default dimensions. We'll make this two meters long, a meter wide, and we'll make it, say, 250 high. Right. And I'll just add a building material. And I'll give it a plastic surface. And under here, we'll just go. All right. So that's easy defining your prism, right? To put our hole in it, the trick is, as I said, a negative one status code, but you need to duplicate the first coordinate line of your prism. So in this case, it's 0, 0, 15, and we have our status code of negative one. So because that is the same as that, that will close off our contour. Now we can define our hole. Let's have a margin around the edge of, say, 100. So I'll just put in a variable here. And so our first coordinate for our hole will be edge margin, edge margin 15. Then it will be a minus edge margin. Copy our first coordinate line of our hole down here. We'll give it a negative one and make sure that we've got all our commas in place. And because we now have more contour lines, we need to update this here to the correct number. There we go. There's the hole. And that is the fundamental principle of putting a hole in your prisms. That's pretty simple though, right? I think we can do better than that. First of all, let's get all these out of here and use our buffer. So we'll take this prism, we'll put them at the end. All of that, we will go. So put, we'll put all these coordinate lines into temporary memory, into the buffer. 
We'll go NSP here for our number divided by three. NSP is number of stored parameters, so one, two, three per line. So we want to take the number of stored parameters divided by three, which will give us the number of lines. And then down here, we want to get what we have in memory and we want to get them all. So we want to get all the stored parameters. That should be the same. There we go. But now what that means is I don't have to keep on recalculating these lines when I change things. So I'll save our file, file, save. Make sure you save it to an external location. And I'll just call this EDB holes. And because we have this project two command active in our 2D script, now when I place it in my plan, and of course, because it's the fresh object I've just saved, it will be selected here when I activate my object tool. Place it there, a bit heavy on the scale. And there it is. Now this is still parametric, so if I stretch this, the hole will update to suit. There it is in 3D. Excellent. Okay. Let's now put in another hole. Let's do that. So this will now be instead of A minus edge margin. Let's have a look here so we can see what we're doing. I'll just reset this to default. Instead of A minus edge margin, it will be A divided by 2 minus edge margin divided by 2 in the X. All right. There's that. And so now we want to do the other hole. Copy this whole contour down and adjust what I need. So I don't need that first one. I will need to be starting from the middle plus half an edge margin. So A divided by 2 plus edge margin divided by 2. Then I go all the way to the end and minus my edge margin. It's still at the bottom. Then I'll need another one of these. But then it's at the top. Then I'll need A divided by 2 plus edge margin divided by 2. That'll be a 15. And then we copy the first contour and make it a negative 1. And I need a comma here. So I've got one of my contours wrong. You probably spotted it way before I did. I'm missing this one here. There we go. So I'll save that. There it is. Parametric. So the sizes of these holes update to suit. Well, that's pretty good. But now we've hard coded coordinates in and it's just two holes. What if we want more? What if we want flexibility? Well, we can do that, can't we? If you don't know me, I'm Bruce. And I like to teach people how to make full use of this great BIM platform. I believe a rising tide raises all ships, and if you can create powerful, useful, efficient objects to streamline your modelling and documentation workflows, then the whole industry benefits. So if you think I'm worth your repeated attention, then at the end of this video, click that subscribe button. Let's say uh, add a couple of parameters here, and we'll call this number of holes in the X dimension. Make that an integer and so if we have a look at how we might figure this out, we've got two holes and we've got three borders one, two, three. So, in order to work out the whole width, we need to take our A length, subtract our margin width, multiplied by the number of holes plus one margin width and then divide the result by our number of holes. And then what we do is we have variables and we use those variables to increment our coordinate lines. Let me show you what I mean by that. That's all a bit confusing, I think. We'll go whole length equals A minus edge margin multiplied by number of holes X plus one. And that will be in brackets. And then we want all of that divided by number of holes x. So this is where I like to sketch some things out. I have a worksheet that's just called sketches. 
to test my ideas because sometimes, well, most of the time, <laughs> I have a hard time working it out in my head. So if I do A, 2000, minus, so I've got three margins there, minus 300, which is the number of holes plus another one, equals 1700, divided by number of holes, it's 850 hole width. So that's good, right? Have I done this correctly? The way you work that out is you go print, oh, let's go two. So I'll save that. So I'll just reset this to two meters wide. Now I should have 850 as an answer. So nothing came up. And the reason for that is I need to have under options, work environment, model rebuild options. I need to have interrupt with error messages turned on. Now, when I open this, I get my print statement on the screen, my dialog here. And it tells me that my hole is 850. So my calculation is correct. Keeping in mind, of course, that in GDL, all length measurements are in meters. Excellent. So that's good. Now what I want to do, so I've got my first contour here. Then I want to say for cohort X equals edge margin. So now we put in our contours here. So our first X will be cohort X. Our Y will be edge margin. And we'll have a 15. Then we'll have coord x plus hole length and then edge margin. And then we will have the same thing. This time it will be at b minus edge margin. And then we need to come back to the start, which will just be b minus edge margin. That's back at the start. And now we need to close off our hole, which is that same one but it's a minus one, no comma. All right, and this will be a put. Indent these, because they all belong to that put. And then once we're finished putting in those coordinates, we now need to go coord x equals coord x plus hole length. So let's just comment these out. Is our script okay? Use of real types, line 17. No comma here. Let's have a look. Right, so I've got that slightly wrong. That does need to be edge margin. There we go. Excellent. So now if I change this to three, there we go, three holes. Change this to four, four holes. Excellent. And it's parametric. Great. So, of course, we can do that in the Y direction as well. And you need to make sure that you have some parameter limitations in place. Under our parameter script, I'll copy in some starter code again. And under values, I'll go values range has got to be greater than zero. There we go. I could also just put in the actual values that I want. So let's say... I'll only allow five holes or six holes. So there we go. I can choose my number of holes there. Let's put in an edge margin. So now we can say edge margin equals 100 there. That's good. If I change that to 50, that's good. If I change it to, <laughs> that's going to break. See, that doesn't work. So we're going to have to put in some limitations on that. So we'll say values, the range has got to be greater than zero. That's the lower limit. It's got to be greater than zero and it's got to be smaller than A divided by number of holes X plus one. 490. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So that works. So that works for that. But what if my shape's the other way? What if it's narrow and tall instead of wide? And skinny then you need to bring in a minimum so here we go minimum of a or b and we need to introduce values here for our holes y need one more in here 
Did I get that right? Could have. <laughs> yep, that's looking good. 1,000. Good. Excellent. So now let's do the same for the Y axis. So we need to now add a nested loop. So we've got our first loop, which will take us across the X holes in our width. So what we want to do is we want to go to the first column of holes and then loop down. So this will be a nested loop. So for J, we indent these so we know they belong to this loop. So what will happen is we'll come to our first position, number of holes X. Oh, I need a chord here. Yeah, so we'll start drawing from the bottom left corner and we'll go. Won't be B this time, it will be hole width. So this is when we're going up to the top of the hole, hole width. It will be coord Y plus hole width. And then we'll be back to the beginning. So coord X, coord Y minus one. So that'll close the hole. We want this addition of our coordinate on the x direction we want that to be in our i loop so we'll take that out of there put it in there and what we want to do now is we want to add to our coordinate y to jump up one so we'll go chord y equals will that work i don't know so we've got one hole that doesn't work. I know why it doesn't work. Once we've finished our Y loop, we need to reset our coord Y back to the bottom. There we go. So now if I make this two, there we go. If I make this three, there we go. Excellent. So what we do is we have these two variables that change depending on where our whole position is in the X or in the Y. We've calculated how long and how wide our holes are. And then what we do is we loop through the X's and for each X, we loop through the Y's. So we go to the first hole in the X direction. Let's have a look in plan. Now if I have a look at my 2D view. So these are our X, X1, X2, X3. These are our Y, Y1, Y2, Y3. With our loop, for i equals 1 to number of holes in the x. And so it will drop into this one. It'll be 1. It'll drop into this, and then it'll go into j, which is 1 to number of holes y, which in this case is 3. Well, let's just make it 4 so they're different. And so what we'll do is we've got our first loop here, and it'll go i equals 1, j equals 1. i equals 1, j equals 2. i equals 1, j equals 3 and so on. And then we reset down to here with our Y coordinate and we drop over to the next one. So X equals two. And once we've dropped out of our J loop, we get our coordinate X, which to start with was edge margin. Then we add the whole length plus the margin. So now our coord X equals this point here. And so we can add our new coordinates for this hole. When we go to y equals 2, we take our y coordinate, because it's inside the j loop, the, the nested loop, not the outer loop. And once we've added our coordinates, we add to our variable the whole width plus the margin. And we repeat the process. And so we're adding all of these coordinates to the buffer. And because it's unknown how many there might be, because it depends on how many holes the user will select. That's why we use the buffer manipulation and using this NSP, which will count the number of coordinates divided by three to get our coordinate lines, which is the N of our prism. And then get will take everything from the buffer memory and then clear the memory. So that's how that's working. So I've saved it and gone to the plan and I've got a dot which tells me it doesn't work. And the reason I have that is because the parameter script hasn't run enforcing these minimum values. So now that I just open the object, run the parameter script, there we go, it's working again. And of course, this is all parametric. So if I stretch this, so 
So you can get quite sophisticated with this. I mean, this is, in my opinion, this is already sophisticated, but you can you know, start to round the corners or have different shapes for these holes. Some of you may recognize this. It's just a small, low budget film production I had the privilege of working on. But these grates down in the corner here, they are all the same object. That's all the same object using different hole parameters. And it looks, I think it looks pretty good myself. You can get it so that they're a complete lozenge or it's just got rounded corners like that. So that's what's possible with this sort of scripting for your holes. And by using a custom object with all of the parameters, it allows you to produce pretty detailed schedules like this, where all of this schedule information is pulled out of the model. All of this data and quantities, it's all pulled out of the model. And then you just have some supporting details to help interpret what this means. So to reiterate, the key is repeating your first coordinate line at the end with a negative one to close off your contour and to close off each hole. Well, I could keep going, but I'll leave it there. You can now go script some holy objects. Good on you for taking the time to develop your skills. We, as architects and drafts people, we're visual people. We think by drawing. We're not abstract, logic-driven programming people, so learning this stuff can be quite difficult. So, well done. Keep it up. If you think this video brought you value, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any topics you'd like me to cover in the future, leave a comment down below. Go script some objects. I'll see you later.